Welcome back, everyone. Tonight, we're diving deep into one of the most famous alleged alien abduction cases ever, Betty and Barney Hill. You guys sent in some really interesting excerpts about their experience, and we're going to break it all down. Yeah, this case is huge. I mean, it really had a massive impact on how people thought about UFOs and abductions, you know, even decades later. Absolutely. It's 1961, right? Yeah. The girl was driving home from vacation through the White Mountains. It's late, dark, and then they spot something unusual up in the sky. What's the thing that really stands out to you about this initial encounter right off the bat? You know, for me, it's that they weren't out looking for this kind of thing. Like, they were just a normal couple heading home. Barney especially. He was a World War II vet, super level-headed, not the type to get spooked easily. Right. They weren't exactly like paranormal investigators or something. <laughs> Haha. <laughs> but then their story takes this really strange turn where everything was bigger than just a quick sighting. They end up losing two hours. Two hours they can't account for at all. This whole missing time thing is a major part of it, wouldn't you say? Oh, for sure. Missing time is like a hallmark of these kinds of cases, almost like a calling card. But with the Hills, it wasn't just the missing time. There was also physical stuff, like Betty's dress was torn, their watches stopped working. Something definitely messed with them that night. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, and that's when it all takes on this whole other level of weirdness for them, right? They're home now, right. trying to just go back to normal life after this strange event. But then... The nightmares start. And it's those nightmares, the constant fear and the anxiety that are really important here. Because it wasn't like the Hills were trying to get famous or anything. They were genuinely disturbed by what they couldn't remember. Betty's vivid dreams about the craft, Barney's feeling like he was paralyzed. It wasn't just their imaginations running wild. These were deeply unsettling real experiences for them. It seems like it really got to them. Yeah. I mean, they, they even went to a psychiatrist, and not just for a couple of sessions either. They went through years of therapy before ever even telling anyone about it publicly. Exactly. And that's a big deal, the fact that they were willing to get professional help. Mm. It gives their story another layer of, well, I guess believability. Mm. They weren't looking to profit off of any of it. They were just trying to deal with something that terrified them and made zero sense. And that's where the hypnosis comes in, right? Mm -hmm. This is where things start to get a bit clearer about what they think happened during those missing hours. Yeah, and under hypnosis, they both described really similar experiences of being on board some type of craft. They even described the beings they encountered, the large eyes, gray skin. The classic image of the gray alien, right? Right, but did their story create that, or was it already something people were imagining? It's like, which came first, the chicken or the egg? We may never know. It makes you wonder. There were definitely older stories of similar beings, but the Hills gave a ton of detail, especially under hypnosis. It definitely caught people's attention and made that image stick in a powerful way. But we do have to remember that using hypnosis to recover memories is, well, it's controversial. Yeah, it's not exactly like hitting play on a perfect recording of your past, is it? Not at all. It's not foolproof by any means. But what I find so interesting about the Hills case is that they remembered details independently. They weren't hypnotized together or anything, but their stories lined up in really significant ways. Okay, so we've got the missing time, the weird physical stuff that happened, and now matching stories under hypnosis. It's already pretty convincing. But then there's yeah. one more thing, right? Betty's star map. Ah, yes, the star map. Years after everything went down, while she was under hypnosis, Betty drew this map from memory. She said it showed the star system these beings were from. And here's the kicker. Some astronomers looked at her map, and it actually seems to line up with a real star system, Zeta Reticuli. It's a pretty wild detail. It just shows how mysterious this whole case is. I mean, even all these years later, people are still talking about it and debating it. It really gets under your skin. It really does make you stop and think. What if it's true? It would change everything. It really uh -huh. makes you think about what it would do to you mentally if you really went through that and then try to tell people about it. Right. It kind of makes you think about how we react to the unknown, to stuff that just doesn't make sense with what we think is real. Like, it's almost more about how we react to it than the UFO itself, you know? Because let's be real, whether you believe their story or not, the Hills went through it. I mean, people were skeptical, made fun of them. Some even said they made the whole thing up. It makes you wonder how they handle all that pressure, especially with something so personal and, let's face it, pretty unbelievable. Totally. It's like this deep need we all have to understand the world. When something happens that just doesn't fit in with anything we know, we try to make sense of it somehow, right? We come up with scientific reasons, psychological explanations, or even just stories to help us cope. And the Hill story 
it really fed into that whole cultural obsession with UFOs and aliens, didn't it? It was like the perfect storm. Oh, absolutely. I mean, some people think that all the Cold War paranoia going on at the time made people more likely to see conspiracies everywhere. And the Hills, they were this respectable average couple. It made their story seem more believable than some of the others floating around back then. Right. It wasn't some guy rambling on a street corner. Exactly. And then you've got books, documentaries, even a TV movie. Their story became a cultural phenomenon. And that whole gray alien thing. I mean, it's everywhere now. It makes you wonder, did their story create that image in our minds or was it already there? It's kind of hard to tell for sure, but you can't deny that what we're exposed to affects how we see things. If we keep hearing a story or seeing an image, it starts to influence how we understand things, even if we don't realize it. It's like we find what we're looking for or something. Exactly. The Hill case came at a time when people were already scared. The Cold War, the threat of nuclear war, the sheer vastness of space. It gave them a story they could connect with, something that felt real, even if it was terrifying. And that kicked off this huge wave of interest in UFOs and abductions that hasn't really gone away, has it? Not even a little bit. Their case changed how we talk about these things. It went from the fringes of society right into the mainstream media. And it made us face some uncomfortable questions about how our memories work, how trauma affects us, and what it really means to believe in something. It's got a lot to unpack, really. Yeah, it really highlights how we can't always trust our own minds, especially when something huge and unexplainable happens. I mean, what do you do with that? It's kind of humbling, right? The idea that we don't have it all figured out and what we believe might not be the whole picture makes you think. It does. And that's exactly why the Hill case is still so fascinating and controversial all these years later. It reminds us that we still have so much to learn about ourselves and the universe. And it makes you wonder, what else is out there that we haven't even begun to imagine? Exactly. The possibilities are endless. It's amazing to me how one case from so long ago, the 1960s, can still cause so much debate and get people talking. It just goes to show you how powerful the unknown really is. Totally. The Hill case isn't just about what did or didn't happen to them, you know. It's about how we deal with things we just can't wrap our heads around. It makes us question everything we thought we knew. And it makes you think about what it was like for them back then, you know. The Hills face so much skepticism and ridicule. Some people straight up call them liars. It makes you think about the mental and emotional toll of going through something like that, something that shakes your reality to the core and then having the world not believe you. Absolutely. Imagine having this experience that just shatters everything you thought was real and then having to carry that weight, that fear and uncertainty largely on your own because no one believes you. It's got to have a huge impact on you. It really makes you think about how we treat people who come forward with these kinds of stories. It makes you wonder, are we really ready to hear about things that challenge our understanding of the world? It's a lot easier to just dismiss something than to really sit with the discomfort of the unknown. It's true. We often choose the easier path. But the Hills, they chose to face it head on, even if it meant ridicule and disbelief. That takes courage. It does. Their story, with all its twists and turns, it really made people think about things in a whole new light. And even though it happened decades ago, it's still inspiring books, movies, documentaries. People are still fascinated by it. Right. And it reminds us that we don't have all the answers. There's still so much out there that we don't understand about ourselves, about the universe, about what's possible. Exactly. And that's what makes this whole thing so intriguing, isn't it? The mystery of it all. The Hill case, whether you believe it or not, it pushes us to consider other possibilities, to question what we think we know, and to accept that there's a whole lot out there that we haven't even begun to grasp. It's like that saying, the more you know, the more you realize you don't know. Exactly. The Hill case reminds us to stay curious, to keep asking questions, and to be open to the possibility that our reality is much bigger and more complex than we ever imagined. Well said. And on that note, that's another deep dive in the books. Thanks for exploring with us tonight, everyone. Until next time, keep looking up.